Hey everyone, in today's video, we're taking a look at this Kenwood KR5010. I've actually had this kicking around for over a year now. It was actually part of the deal where I sold the original V12 out of my Jaguar. The guy who bought that added this as additional payment, along with two other fun receivers we're going to get to look at in the future here. This one appears to be from the late 70s from what I can tell, and I am told that it has a blown output or something, or it just uh, quit working, and that's why it was uh, shelved and put away. Let's take a closer look at this thing, get to know it, and then uh, put it on the dim bulb and see what happens. So it is a mid-level Kenwood. I believe it is rated at 45 watts per channel. It's uh, pretty basic here, not too many great features, but one thing I think is really cool about this is we have power meters, actually. So you've got uh, fun little guys moving to your music there. That's not something you see on too many receivers, honestly, and I'm kind of happy to see it here, because I really like that. Then you've got a general tuning meter. I always like the one that gives you the center. Yeah, not too many controls here. It just got some tape monitor fun stuff, high filter, and uh, your basic controls here. Let's take a look at the back of this thing. I do like to see this. You've got uh, modern speaker connections right here. So you can put a banana plug in the center there, or I believe there's a really nice place. Yeah, you could put a wire straight through there and then clamp down on it. So that's really nice. You've got your inputs. Doesn't look like there's a pre-out main in in this thing, but you know, that's okay. If it's mid-level, most people aren't trying to do that. And then funny enough, this actually does not come with screws in the top cover, so let's just let's just go right into it. Let's flip this around. Turn on the bench light here, let the camera adjust. So it looks like they took a page out of the Pioneer playbook with the X50 series. We've got the light diffuser similar to what you'd see in a SX750, for example. We've got cute little filter capacitors back there. And then, uh, I was looking earlier, and I'll show you, you can't see it very well, but you see those, uh, lines right there? That means we've got the STK50-ish, or something, uh, power packs in there, which is not great, because if those fail, uh, you gotta find a replacement, and that's not really all that fun most of the time. Uh, a little bit of dust. Not the cleanest thing I've ever seen but also not the worst. I mean, you, you saw the power washed 2230. And then uh, this is supposed to be the preamplifier stage and some nice switches. So, you know, we're coming into the 80s here. We're not quite there yet, but it's, it's going to happen. I do not see any obvious failure points here, so let's throw it on the dim bulb. Let's see what happens. Okay, let's plug it in right here. We're switched off. Turn the power on. And, uh, let's go for it. Nothing. Is the power actually on? Maybe. Alright, time to check the fuse. There is no fuse in the back, but what I can see right here is, uh, the fuse. Because these are, these are your mains, and it's coming right into the transformer. And, uh, yeah, that's going to be where the fuse goes. Okay, I don't have any 4-amp, but I have a, a bunch of 3-amp and a one 5-amp, so let's just sacrifice this one 3-amp uh, fuse right here. Man, what a, what a pain in the butt place to put it. That's no fun. Now we are fused We're turned on. And now let's throw this dim bulb. I think we're going to get a nice bright bulb. What do you think? Uh-huh. Yep. All right. I know what that means. It means one of these is bloated. Blown did did very bad. See, that's not getting dim. That's just it's all going straight through. And the fuse is uh just taking all that. So Okay. That's fun. We're going to have to pull the bottom cover and get a look at those modules. We're going to pull them one by one and see what happens. Okay, not too dirty under here. Could use a nice brief wash. And there it is, the Darlington Power Packs. And they are soldered in, which is, uh, you know, not the worst thing in the world, but kind of a pain. Let's, uh, let's work on getting these out, huh? 
we're going to start right here with this one. Okay, that's one out. And actually, fun fact, I already blew the fuse in this thing because I went to go plug this into the dim bulb and uh, yeah, I plugged it into the wall instead on accident. So that's a, that's a costly mistake these days, you know. For some reason, fuses are extremely expensive. We have one pack pulled, not sure which channel, so let's see what happens now when we do this. Okay, so it looks like we got kind of lucky, actually. Yep, that was a relay click. And, uh, wow, all right. Now it's working, maybe. These are all burnt out, so that's kind of funny. So I've got it switched to FM. I see movement out of the uh, right channel watt meter. Let me get an antenna on it. Yeah, I get nothing out of the FM tuning meter, even though we have an antenna on it. Check it for DC offset at the speaker terminals. We have the A speakers turned on. What do we find at the A speakers? On the left channel, we get nothing. And on the right channel, we get nothing. So it looks like our right channel is functioning. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and hook up a speaker to that. Okay, moment of truth. Oh yeah, it's working. Sounds terrible though. So the tuner on this needs a lot of help. It's working very poorly. I'll leave in what I can, but you know, it's having a lot of trouble picking up stations and actually sounding okay. Uh, you know what I just realized? There's no aux on this thing. What the hell? You have to use the tape monitor to use aux. That's stupid. All right, let's do our little tape monitor here and let's play everybody's favorite song. Well, we've got okay performance out of the uh, right channel here. Sounds good. Loudness. Treble. Bass. Alright, so what are we in for here? What we're in for is uh, finding a replacement for the STK-50. X-Ray Tony B, I'm going to talk about him again. He just went through a video series about a Fisher amplifier that had these STK-50s. So we'll see if I can get one of those replacements or if I go to get a counterfeit eBay thingy. Uh, the tuner works terribly. It's probably because it's this open cap right where the dust cover is, which is, again, stupid. Very bad placement of the tuner cap. You could have put it up here, and then it wouldn't have gotten covered with dust. But, you know, they decided to put it there, and it's it's filthy. So here we are. Um, maybe a good cleaning if that'll fix everything. I don't know. We'll find out. But, yeah, then cleaning up the controls. Uh, probably replace a few caps in here. I see some orange ones that aren't fun. Not too much to this thing, also not too hard to work on. I mean, the bottoms of these PCBs, you just flip it over and you can get right to everything. So, I think I'll get started on cleaning the tuner cap, because that's easy and I can do that right now. And we'll see if that helps anything. So the way we're going to do this is we're going to start right here. This is basically just CRC in a different can. And uh, you can see plenty of dust and things in there. I'd go compressed air, but I don't have it on hand, so this will probably be just fine. Let's go. Yeah, looks better already. So the thing about doing this is, uh, you're changing the capacitance of that cap quite a bit by adding that uh, cleaner. So what I'll do is I'll just kind of work this around a few times. And then I'm going to have to come back to this at another time once it's all evaporated. And that'll tell me 
um, if I'm getting the stations a little better or not. While I wait on that, I think I'll go research the STK-50. So I want to give a brief update on this thing. Uh, we know that this is bad. I got lucky. I happened to pull the bad one. This one's still good, and uh, here's the thing about these power packs. Um, they stopped making them in the 80s. You can't get them anymore, but you can get uh, knockoffs or, quote, counterfeits. Another thing that happened is somebody, some kind, incredible soul, released their replacement design for this using discrete components. So they have a circuit board design and loose components that you just buy. You can uh, buy the, C the PCB from a PCB manufacturer and you can just load it up, mount it in here, and you've got yourself a superior um, power pack. And I'm actually going to do both of those options for this here. So what I've done is I've ordered the cheapest one of these I could get on eBay coming from China. I don't know what it's going to get here. And then I also ordered the uh, PCBs and the components to make uh, replacement STK power packs. That should be a very interesting thing to see. Uh, second, I tested out the FM tuner after uh, cleaning it with the uh, contact cleaner. It does not work any better. So it's going to need an FM alignment and that might be the first FM alignment I do on this channel. I bought that uh, Sencor SG-165 a long time ago and I still haven't uh, truly used it for an alignment yet. So I think I'm going to wrap it up right here and uh, save these repairs for future videos. Uh, there will be an FM tuner alignment video, then there will be a power pack replacement slash uh, battle. Uh, the, the cheapest one on eBay versus an actual uh, discrete component. So that is it. Thank you so much for watching. Uh, be sure to subscribe if you want to see these future videos, and I'll see you in the next one.